Time now for the Business Report with Joel Crosskill. Report. The Irish Times are indicating that Digicel Group Chief Executive Oliver Coughlin is to step down from the role in December, with Chief Operating Officer Martin Boot assuming the role on an interim basis. Coughlin had been due to retire at the end of 2022. However, the Irish Times reports that Coughlin will remain as a director and shareholder of the company. It is also reporting that Digicel founder Dennis O'Brien will announce his successor as chairman in the coming weeks at the end of a debt restructuring process that will reduce his equity shareholding to about 10%. The restructuring proposal is to reduce debt by about 1.7 billion US dollars through a restructuring plan at different entity levels. Fitch Ratings, in its ratings action commentary on Digicel International Finance Limited, states that the restructuring aims to reduce gross consolidated debt for the group to about US $3 billion from US $4.7 billion, adding that creditors will become the main shareholders of the new group structure with the completion of the restructuring due to be completed towards the end of the year, subject to required regulatory and other governmental approvals. Digicel Group's Chief Executive Officer Oliver Coughlin will be stepping down on his retirement at the end of December. Succeeding him is Martin Boot, Digital Group's Chief Operating Officer, who will be appointed as Interim Group CEO for the business. Over the past three and a half years, under Oliver's leadership, Digital launched its digital operator strategy, divested the Pacific arm of the business in a sale to Telstra, navigated the COVID-19 pandemic and returned the business to growth despite challenging industry environments. Martin has been with the company for well over 14 years, and in the past eight months, he has worked very closely with Oliver as Group Chief Operating Officer. Given his familiarity with the business, we have every confidence in his ability to lead the company during this time. And the IMF today released its regional economic outlook for the Western Hemisphere under the heading Securing Low Inflation and Nurturing Potential Growth. The data shows that Latin America and Caribbean growth is decelerating after a strong recovery from the pandemic driven mainly by a weakening in manufacturing. The region's exports have lost momentum in 2023, partly due to weakening commodity prices, while financial conditions have remained tight. Employment has returned close to the pre-pandemic trend, and unemployment has fallen sharply, as labour force participation has plateaued at a lower level. Headline inflation has fallen across the region, in line with the global trends. Core price pressures are starting to recede, helped by falling import prices and currency appreciation. Real policy rates have risen sharply, including relative to other economies, commensurate with the magnitude of the inflationary shock. Consumer credit growth is slowing and corporate credit is contracting, due to both tighter lending conditions and weaker demand for credit. Caribbean moderating recovery with low inflation. Economic activity was strong, but is moderating the sharp rise in inflation since 2021 was mostly driven by global factors, adding that risks are more balanced but still tilted to the downside. Climate-related shocks pose notable risks. El Nino could negatively affect economic activity in some countries in the medium term. Climate-related shocks pose risks through the impact on migration, which can lead to reduced agricultural output that could be partially offset by the increase in remittances. As part of its main messages, the IMF report recommends that boosting growth requires addressing long-standing structural challenges, adapting to new ones and enhancing social cohesion, boosting trade including intra-regional, strengthening domestic security, developing frameworks to foster investment in green minerals, enhancing the quality of education, and strengthening social protection mechanisms. I'm Joel Crosskill, and that's where we end the Business Report.